Viewers, today we have some massive news. OpenAI just announced the ChatGPT iOS app for your phone. By the way, viewers, you're gonna need to update your phone to use this, so I'm literally updating my phone as we speak. And then I'm gonna go ahead and download the app and give all of you wonderful people at home a full rundown. This is going to change everything. Your phone is a heck of a lot more accessible than a website on the computer, or I guess you could access ChatGPT before on your phone through the website, but it's a lot more clunky. And your grandma is certainly going to be able to download an app a lot easier than trying to log into a site. Here, viewers, we can see the announcement from OpenAI on Twitter introducing the ChatGPT app for iOS. We're live in the U.S. and will expand to additional countries in the coming weeks. Android is next. So yeah, it's actually fairly limited right now, which is unfortunate, but the good news is they are expanding to more countries and Android very, very shortly. Taking a better look at the announcement on the website obviously we have a direct link to the app store but we do have some words from OpenAI. since the release of chat gpt we've heard from users that they love using chat gpt on the go today we're launching the chat gpt app for ios the chat gpt app is free to use and syncs your history across devices it also integrates whisper which is their open source speech recognition system which is phenomenal by the way that means you can speak to chat gpt directly through your phone and it picks up your voice and what you're trying to say very very accurately ChatGPT Plus subscribers, which again is their $20 a month subscription service for ChatGPT, get exclusive access to GPT-4's capabilities, which was already a thing, and also early access to features and faster response times all on iOS. So the good news is that your ChatGPT Plus access does carry over to iOS. Another important thing to note here, Bing Chat, which is very, very similar to ChatGPT in a lot of ways, already was accessible through the Bing app on your iOS device and probably Android devices as well. However, it's really not that classic chat GPT we've all come to know and love. For example, Bing chat cannot save previous chats. You can't designate whether you're using GPT-4 or GPT-3.5, and there's a little bit more safety features in Bing Chat that make it more annoying to use. This is going to be a lot faster, and I am very excited to see if it tops the charts of the App Store. This is definitely going to put ChatGPT into the hands of more people who don't even know what this technology is or what it's capable of. And, you know, as... A society we're gonna have to learn to teach people who don't really know much about this tech how it all works and spread the right information on it I think we're going to have to expect a lot more situations such as this one to arise this made me so upset a Texas professor failed an entire class of seniors blocking them from graduating claiming they use ChatGPT because in this professor's mind how ChatGPT works is you can essentially take any body of text and paste it into ChatGPT and ask if ChatGPT wrote that text, and most of the time ChatGPT just goes, yeah, yeah, I wrote that text. Which, obviously, to us, people who are well informed about the AI space because they watch channels such as Matt Vidpro AI, we know that obviously ChatGPT does not work like that. It doesn't have some memory storage where it can access every single thing it wrote at any moment and recognize it, but Yes, it actually is now hurting an entire class of seniors and causing this huge issue where they can't graduate and they have to go through all these loops and jumps just to get a very ridiculous situation sorted out. All right, enough procrastinating. Let's jump into the ChatGPT app. And yes, viewers, I sincerely apologize for the abysmal video quality. But this is what we have to work with for me to be able to record my iPhone here. As I said earlier, you need to update your iOS to the latest version to be able to use the new ChatGPT app, so we're doing that now. So here is the OpenAI ChatGPT app. Instant answers, tailored advice, creative inspirations, professional input, personalized learning. Oh, you guys can't feel this, but my phone is actually vibrating as the text comes across, which is kind of cool. It's like a cool haptic feeling. All right, we're now logged into the ChatGPT app. ChatGPT can be inaccurate. Don't share sensitive info. The first thing that I'm noticing right off the bat is that we are in light mode. Oh, and it seems that there is no setting at all for dark mode. We've obviously got GPT 3.5 here and GPT 4 because I am a ChatGPT Plus user. And also here to note, I just got access to both plugins and ChatGPT web browsing. 
which, you know, are beta features, sure, but they're not in this app. And every single ChatGPT Plus user is getting access to those features this week, and they're not in the app they just released. However, we do have Whisper. So let's try the Whisper functionality. Hello, ChatGPT, how are you doing today? Oh my god, I could really go for a nice bagel. How can I create the most delicious bagel on the planet? Can you teach me? And you can see how good the speech recognition is from OpenAI's Whisper. That is going to be very easy for my grandma to use. And there is actually haptic feedback that goes along with this app that's kind of cool. As ChatGPT generates more text, you can feel it rumble in your phone. It's kind of like a nice little touch. Oh my god, this thing is actually teaching me how to make a nice delicious bagel from scratch right now. Pretty crazy. I'm wondering if the prompt is any different from regular ChatGPT. Anyways, I'm really disappointed that we don't have access to plugins or web browsing on here yet because I have been having a ton of fun with the ChatGPT Wolfram Alpha plugin in specific. Check out my last video. It's disappointing to see that it's not here yet. So if we click the three dots in the top corner we can see the name of this conversation we can rename it delete it go to our history our settings and here we can actually see a bunch of history from my previous chat gpt what i can't really understand is why they didn't just design this exactly like the chat gpt app is on the website because it's fully capable to be used the same way on your phone as it is on your computer through the website. Why isn't it just a swipe from the left hand side over to see all of your chats? That would make so much more sense than utilizing this. You can really tell that OpenAI has never developed an iOS app. Well, hopefully they improve on this UI in the future because it's fairly primitive, I would say. Like this is utilizing all of Apple's pre-baked in tools to help you develop very simple apps. Like this history tab is honestly very disappointing to me. Well, while it works fine because it's Apple's UI they've had for years, it's nothing custom and it does not feel like the website at all. Oh, okay. This is really interesting. So you actually can use the plugins and web browsing. You just can't start a new chat unless you start it on the computer first. But once you have access to it, you can see Wolfram is still in here. You can see I was doing some very silly work here. If we scroll to the top though, it just shows essentially the whole chat. Let's see if the Wolfram Alpha plugin still works. Calculate how large my biceps would need to be to lift a 2,000 pound boulder. The size of your biceps alone doesn't directly determine your ability to lift a certain weight. Oh, you don't say. Yeah, well, there is a lot of factors in this equation. I, I know this, chat GPT. I'm just being silly. Oh, it's, it's gonna go ahead and try to make a rough estimate based on the strength of world-class powerlifters. All right, so it's gonna try to do some very simplified scaling. It's actually using Wolfram right now, so the plugins actually do work inside of ChatGPT just fine like they would normally. You just can't access plugins or web browsing from the app yet. You can't start a new chat. You have to use a previous one that's already been created. Very, very interesting. I don't know why they didn't just implement the feature. Maybe they forgot. Based on the assumptions and calculations, your biceps would need to be approximately 33 3.81 inches in circumference to lift a 2,000 pound boulder, assuming that lifting strength is proportional to muscle cross-sectional area. All right, thank you for the accurate information, ChatGPT. All right, let's go into our history here and find a web browsing one. So I'm wondering, it does have links here, and the links do actually work, so that's cool. Links do work in ChatGPT on iOS. You can see the browser messages still pop up for ChatGPT built-in web browsing. I gotta say, though, it is a lot faster to use ChatGPT inside of your phone. Let's go ahead and give it a basic search task, one that I know it's going to be able to complete because it's only going to need to access OpenAI's actual website. You can see it switches to the browser mode, which is green appearing on the screen. Oh, it's searching OpenAI Whisper technology. It's searching for the same thing again now, apparently. Again, this ChatGPT built-in browser is not very good. It's tapping on OpenAI.com. Okay, it actually, instead of click, it says tap on iOS. That's a really unique touch. They actually changed what the text will say based off if you're using iOS or your computer. Now it's reading the content. Whisper a free speech recognition tool. Yeah, okay. It was able to access that information very easily. And um, yeah, it's giving us links too. So do these sources work as well? Okay, yes, do actually work just fine. So yeah, the links and the sources seem to work completely fine as well as plugins and internet searching. But if you 
you want to make a brand new plugins or internet searching chat, you just gotta go on the computer first and create them. Very interesting. I don't know why OpenAI's Whisper technology is not just available as is through the website. Oh yeah, I did have this thing write me out a poem based on OpenAI's Whisper technology. Whisper, a speech recognition tool trained on data, vast and cool, multilingual, multitask, its creation from the web, a wide observation. Encoder, decoder, a simple design, in audio's realm, it does shine, taking chunks of 30 seconds, converting them on no one, depends. The data set large, diverse in kind, Whisper's robustness we do find, errors fewer by half and count, against many benchmarks, it does amount. A third of data, not an English, yet Whisper's skills do not diminish, transcribing, translating a master feat, its performance others it does beat. A voice for apps, the aim in sight for developers, a future bright Whisper, a tool of AI fame in the realm of tech, it takes its claim. Renaming chats is pretty easy here, you can pretty much rename them as you would expect. Overall, it's a... Uh, it's a pretty fine iOS app. I don't know why they didn't design it to look more like the website. I feel like the UI could use a little work. It's very, very much like straight Apple right now. I'm sure they're going to improve on it and make it better, but yeah, I'll probably try to use ChatGPT through this method more often because it's just a lot more accessible, like we've stated earlier. Well, viewers, what do you think of the brand new ChatGPT app? I'd love to hear your comments and thoughts on it down below, but yeah, this is definitely the start starting point for a new era of ChatGPT that is much more accessible to the general crowd, people who just have iPhones and can download the app very simply and set up an account in a matter of minutes. I'm excited to see what a whole new class of creative people that didn't really use this tech before do with it now. Accessibility really is the name of the game when it comes to new technology like this, and that's again why I'm one of those people that really supports open source technology, even though OpenAI ironically doesn't support support open source technology very much. At least the ChatGPT app is completely free for everyone to use, so you gotta give them props for making it accessible to a large degree. Thank you so much for watching viewers, I'm at vidproai and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.